For nearly four centuries, this rocky, ragged, often fog-bound coast of Nova Scotia has been a graveyard for shipwrecks. The unpredictability of weather on the North Atlantic, the changing, often swirling winds, as well as a deadly maze of shoals, granite sunkers, and sandbars have made Nova Scotia's coast one of the most cursed places to navigate in the world. More than 5,000 known shipwrecks are scattered along Nova Scotia's coast. 5,000. One of them lies here at Mosier Island, about 30 kilometers southeast of Halifax. It is SS Atlantic, a luxury liner, one of the first of the White Star Line's floating palaces. Captain Stan Little carefully steers the boat around a dangerous stretch of shoals and sunkers. Why did such a big ship, a luxury liner, which was heading for New York, suddenly change course and sail so close to this treacherous shore? Five hundred and forty-seven passengers died when Atlantic sank. Three hundred are buried in this cemetery at Lower Prospect, which is not far from the dive site. In fact, according to a government investigation into the sinking of SS Atlantic, all of the women on board perished, all of the married couples died as well, and all of the children except one. Why? Why did only men survive, including the captain? Why? Captain Stan Little joins the team. They are about to dive the wreck of Atlantic. They are about to discover an intriguing shipwreck story, which is not only horrifying, but cloaked in mystery. Ken Hodges has joined the team for this dive. Ken is with the Marine Archaeology Society. Allison Mills is a graduate student in marine biology. There's a legend told in the nearby fishing villages that an offshore breeze sings with the voices of hundreds of women and children, the voices of those damned to drown in the SS Atlantic. And there's another legend among the fishermen which says that in the swirling water where that luxury liner went down, there often appears the faces of the dead. These are the faces of the hundreds of women and children who had boarded that ship in Liverpool, England, unsuspecting that they were sailing into eternity. SS Atlantic had been built in Belfast in 1871. She was 420 feet long and 3,390 registered tons. Atlantic was iron-built with six watertight bulkheads. Four coal-fed steam engines powered her and she was fitted with four large square rig masts for backup. She was a stately ship, magnificent for her day, and the talk of the waterfront when she set sail from Liverpool, England of March 20th, 1873, with a thousand people on board, many of them women and children. There were 33 American millionaires on board, they were well accustomed to the luxury of this luxurious ship. SS Atlantic had a crew of 143 men and four officers. Her captain was James Williams. Captain Williams had crossed the Atlantic Ocean many times. SS Atlantic was queen of the White Star Line. She had teak and mahogany paneled walls and solid brass fittings in the cabins. There were sitting rooms, smoking rooms, dining rooms, and bars, as well as a marble dance floor at the foot of the ship's winding staircase, on which sat a strange bronze statue of a vulture. The dining room was equipped with the finest silverware. In contrast to all the luxury and opulence of the upper decks, the accommodations and steerage were spartan and bare. 
800 steerage passengers had been crammed into the lower decks. Most of these were families with children. They were so crowded in the lower decks and so deep in the belly of the ship that it was nearly impossible for many to escape to the open air. This south shore of Nova Scotia is so picturesque and so treacherous. The shoaling water is a navigator's nightmare. All right, Bob, you ready? Diving the wreck of SS Atlantic is a dive to an intriguing shipwreck with a story that is not only horrifying, but cloaked in mystery. The divers descend through a green twilight, a sort of threshold which opens into another world where imagination and reality take a single shape in the diver's mind. As Atlantic departed Liverpool, England, and steamed for open ocean, Captain Williams was anxious and uneasy about this crossing. The owners had loaded just enough coal to sail from Liverpool to New York. The quality of the coal was poor as well. That, too, had Captain Williams worried. If his floating palace ran a stretch of bad weather on the North Atlantic, it could easily exhaust the coal supply before ever reaching New York. Captain Williams prayed hard for good weather. On March 25th, the ocean answered his prayers with a vengeance. A fierce storm threw up a wall of high winds and heavy sea. The storm slowed Atlantic's progress. She burned more coal than planned, lots of it. Atlantic burned so much coal in that storm that her chief engineer reported the coal supply now dangerously low. If Atlantic ran more bad weather, she would not reach New York. Captain Williams ordered his helmsman to change course for the nearest port to resupply his ship with coal. That port was Halifax, Nova Scotia. Neither Captain Williams nor his four officers had ever sailed into Halifax. What little they knew of this ragged coastline was what they read on a navigational chart. By Captain Williams' calculations, at midnight they should see the flash and beam of the light of the harbor mouth. She was eight miles off course. At 3.15 a.m., and at the speed of 12 knots, Atlantic struck Golden Rule Rock. Immediately, the vessel heeled to starboard and settled at a 50-degree angle. The plowing sea filled the bulkheads, drowning many steerage passengers in their beds. Those families lucky enough to climb to the open deck now met a crashing sea, and their desperate captain clinging to the mainmast and ordering them to climb into the rigging as their only chance. Wave after wave washed many to their deaths as they waited their turns to pull themselves up into the ropes and wires. Single men, however, and most of the crew had been first to the open deck and first into the rigging. Three of the ship's officers, Owens, Speakman, and Brady, risked their lives swimming ropes to a nearby rock. They then got a line and hawser across a small channel to Mosier Island. Crew and then passengers crossed to the rock, hand over hand on the rope line. Hundreds of them squeezing onto that small hunk of granite, waiting their turn to continue on to the island. Waiting, pressing, madly crushing together and forcing others off the rock and into the wild waves.
By dawn, fishing boats challenged the surf to pluck survivors from the rock and from the rigging. One was a 12-year-old boy, John Hindley. A high sea kept the fishing boats from reaching him. Suddenly, young Hindley let go his grasp on the rigging and was washed off the wreck to a pounding wave which seemed to hold him at the crest for a long moment before flinging him toward the outstretched arms of a fisherman. Fishermen saved 429 people that day. All were men. Every woman and all the children, save one, had died. And there it is. Twisted heat from iron. Ragged and broken like the bodies of 547 dead. The breakers wrecked the ship, and the breakers battered it to pieces. A field of kelp grows over the starboard side of the wreck. This is the side which ripped open when Atlantic hit Golden Rule Rock. Ken and Allison swim past wreckage which casts tragic shadows across their minds. This is part of the gear shaft which had once turned one of Atlantic's huge propellers. All that remains of that floating palace are boilers and bulkheads in an iron hull buried and unburied, then buried again by time and the tide and the drifting sediment. These huge boilers had required tons and tons of coal to fire them for an Atlantic crossing. An official inquiry determined that Atlantic did have enough coal to reach New York the changing course for Halifax had been a mistake. Nevertheless, the ship should have reached Halifax safely. SS Atlantic wrecked because Captain Williams had misjudged the wind and currents in Nova Scotia's south coast, and because his officers had failed to take depth soundings and had inaccurately estimated the ship's speed. This is what brought Atlantic eight miles off course and to run her belly into Golden Rule Rock. Survivors later told how many of the crew had been first on deck and first on the rope line to safety. The crew had abandoned families to drown in the lower decks and women and children to perish to the raging sea. That's why all the women perished why all the married couples died, and all the children, save one. Most of the crew aboard SS Atlantic had abandoned them. Worse, some crew had even robbed the bodies and salvaged the trunks and belongings of those who had died on Golden Rule Rock and on Mosher Island. For several days after, fishermen continued to search for bodies which snagged on rocks or washed on shore. Hard-hat divers searched for the bodies trapped in the belly of the wreck. 
They risked their lives in doing so. These were the early days of diving when so little was known about the dangers of diving deep, especially diving in rough terrain and against strong currents. These hard-hat divers bore the grisly task of walking through that underwater tomb and coming face to face with the dead. Hundreds of steerage passengers had gone down with the ship. Their bodies tangled in the wreckage, battered by the pounding sea. Their bones flensed and scattered, just anywhere in the lower decks. The bodies were brought ashore and prepared for burial. There were so many, mostly women and children. Their names are preserved in the pages of newspapers and on the stone markers in the cemetery. In 1873, the sinking of SS Atlantic was the The sea is clawing at the gravesite, washing away the soil and exposing the bones of the dead. Another legend from this Nova Scotia coast tells of a gray lady who appears in the fog on a point of land overlooking the wreck site. Legend says she's the mother of John Hindley, the only child to survive the sinking. What lies on the bottom and what the team leaves undisturbed are the remnants of tragedy and the awakening of death. For all of them, this dive will resurrect and preserve the memory of those who died in the sinking of SS Atlantic. <laughs>